This video is about uh, glucose transport. Now glucose is transported across the body through a couple of mechanisms, so I'll be talking about those. And I'll take this opportunity to also talk about the different kinds of transports that's going on, um, regardless of glucose. So this is a combination between glucose transport and different kinds of transport that is available. So first of all, uh, glucose uses two kinds of transport system, the glutes and the SGLT, and I will go over each one of them uh, separately. First, let's talk about the glutes. Now, the glutes are, are, are transporters that are found in, in, the, in, in the body. Um, there is like glute 1, glute 2, glute 3, glute 4, and glute 5. Different cells have different glutes, um, and different glutes have different uh, capacity of taking uh, glucose in. For example, the glutes that are in the liver, you have to have very high concentration of glucose in the liver for those to be activated or outside the liver for those to be activated. But the glute force, which are, which are found in the muscle and the adipose tissue, you don't need so much glucose. As soon as you have glucose in the system, those glutes are going to be activated. So, but primarily, all the glutes, no matter where they are, acts in the same way, and that is through facilitated uh, diffusion. Uh, so let's talk about facilitated diffusion a little bit. But before we talk about facilitated diffusion, let's talk about types of transport. So basically there are two types of transport. But before we even go into transport, let's talk about two things. Those are osmosis and diffusion. What is diffusion? Diffusion is the, is the transfer of, um, of gases from high concentration to low concentration. That's, so that's diffusion. So from high to low. And we usually let, and we usually refer it for gases. But when we're saying osmosis, osmosis is the, is the movement of water or, for our, or our solvent from uh, low concentration to high concentration. So it's kind of opposite. A lot of people, I don't know why, gets confused with this because it's the water or the solvent that is moving, not the solute. The solvent is moving from low osmolarity to high osmolarity. So that's osmosis. So those are just, I just mentioned it because we're talking about transport. But really we want to talk about the more important ones which are the facilitated transport and active transport. What's the difference between them? Active transport uses energy and it is uh, against the concentration gradients. This is against. Okay, so what does the word against? There is, a, there is a game of words here, obviously. Against means from low concentration to high concentration. So if there is low concentration and if there is high concentration here, and this movement using energy is going to be active transport. Facilitated is just like diffusion or osmosis. This is movement of um, substances from high concentration to low concentration, okay? So that is facilitated. Then why are we calling it facilitated and not really diffusion? And the reason for that is because in facilitated diffusion, we are using a carrier, okay? So there is a carrier involved. If there is no carrier involved, we can just say it's diffusion. If there is a carrier involved, then there is, it's called facilitated as simple as that. And this is a long, the concentration gradient along. Along means from high concentration to low concentration. Against concentration gradient means from low concentration to high concentration. And I will talk about each one of them more specifically as I go along. Now let's talk about facilitated diffusion first because facilitated diffusion is really um, involved with glutes. Glutes are facilitated diffusion. So they move from high concentration to low concentration using a carrier. Okay? So we took care of this term. Now, since we use a carrier, we use carrier mediated, so this whole term is taken care of. We also talked about how it moves along the concentration gradient, so that is also taken care of. So, so pretty much we talked about how facilitated diffusion works and all glutes, regardless of where they are, glute 1, glute 2, glute 4, doesn't matter. Wherever they are, glutes are using facilitated transport. Facilitated, not active. 
but SGLT which really stands for secondary glucose transport this SGLT uses secondary active transport glutes uses uh, facilitated SGLT uses secondary active transport so let's talk about active transport now active transport can be divided into primary active transport and secondary active transport what's the difference between the two primary active transport uses energy um, when they are doing the transport use and it uses the energy the ATP the energy from ATP so again whenever we're using ATP we are doing the trans the, that's the primary active transport and it's happening right instantly so sodium potassium ATPase those are primary active transport while they're actively transporting they're using energy from ATP not from any other source from ATP because there is other sources of energy in the body um, we have to use ATP for it to be active transport what about secondary transport whenever we're talking about secondary transport we do use energy but we use it um, with couplings for so for example let's say you have a gradient here and there is low concentration here and there is high concentration here but you don't have uh, active transport you have a secondary transport so what, so what you're gonna do is let's say you're taking in one molecule of sodium and at the same time you're using one molecule of glucose so with the help of sodium you're taking one glucose in so this energy is achieved by this coupling co-transport effect that we are having so that is our secondary active transport again um, active transport is the movement of substances from a lower concentration to a higher concentration regardless whether it's primary or secondary they're both going to move from lower concentration to higher concentration now let's talk about where we can find SGLT okay usually SGLT is found in PCT intestine these are the only two you really have to remember but I put some extra ones just in case you can find it in trachea heart brain testes prostate these are also the areas where you can find SGLT now let's talk about them a little bit in detail now glutes again they travel along the concentration gradient they are passive transport they're carrier mediated so is it fair to say that glute is facilitated carrier mediated passive transport right it is fair to say that because it's a, it's it's incorporating all these things together so we can say that glute is facilitated carrier mediated active sorry passive transport okay so now if they ask you if the question asks you um, is um, glute facilitated transport yes they can just ask that is it carrier mediated hell yeah is it active transport no it's passive transport so you know you just have to put all those things together so this is like a like a summary of all the glutes I will not talk about which glutes are found where because that is straight memory I'm just talking about the mechanism and all glutes work in the same way uh, the only thing is some glutes are more sensitive than the others okay so let's talk about SGLT really there's two types of SGLT oh by the way this is blood let's say this is blood this is our kidney more specifically this is going to be PCT this is going to be the lumen of kidney okay and this is the lumen of GI tract okay and this is going to be our your intestinal cell okay so here you are you're, you're gonna love this so watch this we have glucose here outside in the lumen so let's say these these are our glucose the glucose starts get taken in and we have the concentration really really high here okay so why would we want to take in more glucose from outside to inside because we need to supply our body with glucose 
So still these SGLT2s are going to be actively taking in sodium and glucose at the level of PCT, taking more glucose against the concentration gradient because there's secondary transport. Okay, the same thing happens in the intestine, in the GI tract. There's less glucose outside and more glucose inside. Inside, when I say more glucose inside, I really mean inside the intestinal cell, not really in the blood. So you have to know what they say, what they mean when when they say inside and outside. Because if you're thinking blood, you might be your story might not match, right? So. Just like less glucose is present in the lumen of the kidney or less glucose is present in the GI tract, they're going to be taken in with, with SGLT. Okay, they're going to be taken in through active transport. They're also using Simport because you're taking in one molecule of sodium along with one molecule of glucose. And using this coupling energy, that's why it's active transport because uh, it's using that coupling energy. The only thing is it only thing is that it's a secondary active transport because it is not using ATP rather than it's using the force of sodium right same thing is happening here with one molecule of sodium we're taking in one molecule of glucose now once they're inside the cell now they can enter the blood through our glutes in the kidney it's going to be glute 2 in their intestine it's going to be glute 1 and this process of going into the blood this is passive because the concentration is higher here and lower here concentration higher here and lower here right and this process since we're using glutes this whole process is facilitated carrier mediated passive transport of glucose from the cells onto the blood